Today we're going to be talking about how to find parametric and symmetric equations of a line. And in this particular problem, we've been given the line which passes through two coordinate points. One is 0, 1 half, 1, and the other is 2, 1, negative 3. Well, how are we going to find parametric and symmetric equations for this line passing through these two points? The easiest way to do it is with a vector representation of the line that passes through these points. How do we get a vector representation? Well, we've got these two points and we can represent them as vectors like this, 0, 1 half, 1, and 2, 1, negative 3. But what we really need are the direction numbers that define the direction of the line when the line moves from one point to the other point. And the way that we get those direction numbers is by subtracting the component parts of one of these points from the component parts of the other. So here's what that looks like. We will take the component parts of this second point, 2, 1, negative 3, so we'll start with here 2, the x component of this point, and we'll subtract the x component from this first point, which is 0, so minus 0. Then we'll take the y component and subtract the other one, so 1 minus 1 half, and we always want to go in the same direction. So we always want to start with the second point and subtract the component from the first point. And then we'll start with negative 3 and subtract 1. So minus 1 like this. And when we simplify, we get 2, 1 half, and negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. These are our direction numbers. This is a vector which is parallel to our line because we basically found a vector that goes from one point to the other point. These vectors that we defined earlier go from the origin out to this coordinate point and from the origin out to this coordinate point. So these two vectors move from the origin to the coordinate points. This vector moves from one coordinate point to the other, which means that it's parallel to the line that passes through these two points. And remember that because this vector represents the direction of the line, we also call these values here the direction numbers of our line. Now in order to find parametric equations of the line, the first thing we want to do is write an equation for the line in vector form, or a vector equation of the line. And we're going to define that as r. We're going to say r is equal to, here's where we need to pick one of the points that our line passes through. And in this particular case, we'll pick 2, 1, negative 3, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll say 2, 1, negative 3. Remember that that's also the same as 2i plus 1j minus 3k, so we'll say 2i plus j, 1j, minus 3k, so it passes through that point. Then we add to that t, which is going to be a parameter value, times our direction numbers in vector form. So we're going to do the same thing, 2i plus 1 half j minus 4k. This is going to give us the vector equation of our line. All we need to do now is simplify this by gathering together our components. We want all of our i's together, our j's together, and our k's together. So here's how we're going to do that. First we're going to distribute the t. So we're going to get 2i plus j minus 3k. Then we're going to say plus 2ti plus 1 half tj minus 4tk. Now we want to group our components together. So when we group our i's together, we get 2i plus 2ti. Grouping our j's together, we'll get plus j, we have this 1j here, plus 1 half tj. And then grouping our k's together, we get plus negative 3k minus 4tk, like this. Now we want to factor out our components i, j, and k from these groups. So we want to pull an i out. When we pull i out, we're just left with 2 plus 2t, and we want to put the i behind this value so that 2 plus 2t is like a coefficient on this i component. Then here we want to pull out a j. We're left with 1 plus 1 half t times j. And then we want to pull out a k, and of course we're just left with negative 3 minus 4t, and we pull the k out behind it like this. The reason this is so convenient, remember this is the vector equation of the line, but the reason this is so convenient is because we have everything we need now to find the parametric equations of the line. Remember that i, j, and k correspond to x, y, and z, respectively. All we need to do 
is pull the coefficients that are in front of these i, j, and k components here, pull these coefficients out and set them equal to the variables to which they correspond. So here's what that looks like. Our parametric equations, parametric equations, which we'll just say PEs there, we're gonna say x is equal to this coefficient. So x equals two plus two t. We'll say y equals one plus one half t, and we'll say z is equal to negative three minus four t, and that's it. Now we just need to find our symmetric equations of the line, which is gonna be really easy because all we need to do that is one point on the line and our direction numbers. So here's what that looks like. We'll say symmetric equations, SEs. Let's again use the point two, one, negative three, although it doesn't matter, you could use either of them. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say X minus the X component from the point on the line. So X minus two in this case. And then we're gonna divide by the associated direction number, which is two, we can see here. So we're gonna get X minus two divided by two. We're gonna set that equal to y minus our y value from our coordinate point, which is one. And then we're gonna divide by the associated direction number, which is one half. So divided by one half, set that equal to z minus the z value from our coordinate point, which is negative three. And then we divide that by the associated direction number, which is gonna be negative four. Remember that with symmetric equations, you always set them equal to each other like this. In our numerator, you always say the variable minus the associated value from the coordinate point there. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. Keep in mind also that if we have a direction number that's zero, if any of our direction numbers are zero, then we pull that outside of our symmetric equation. So here's what we mean. If our direction numbers, instead of two, one half, negative four, were zero, one half, negative four, then our symmetric equations would look like this. Because we can't put that zero for x here in our denominator, we'd have x minus two divided by zero, and we can't divide by zero. We just don't include it. We pull this x minus two outside, so our symmetric equations would be like this, x minus two, and then just the y and z equations set equal to each other. So y minus one divided by one half is equal to z minus a negative three divided by negative four. So we'd say our symmetric equations are x minus two, and then separately, y minus one divided by one half is equal to z minus a negative three over negative four. So we just pull it out like that, and, and you'll do that for every symmetric equation for which the associated direction number is equal to zero. But in this case, none of our direction numbers are equal to zero, so we can set all three of these equations equal to one another. Now we just wanna simplify, and simplifying here is really easy. For example, z minus a negative three, instead we're just gonna say z plus three to get rid of that double negative. And then we don't like to have a fraction here in the denominator if we can avoid it. So we're just gonna multiply this fraction by two over two. If we multiply by two over two, then the denominator becomes one. One half times two is just one. That's gonna go away and we'll just be left with two y minus two. So then our final answer for symmetric equations, we get x minus two divided by two is equal to two y minus two is equal to z plus three divided by negative four. And that's how you find parametric and symmetric equations when you have a line passing through two coordinate points.